Peter John Badko, VC was an Australian recipient of the Victoria Cross, the highest award for gallantry in battle that could be awarded at that time to a member of the Australian Armed Forces. Badko, born Peter Badcock, joined the Australian Army in 1950 and graduated from the Officer Cadet School, Portsea, in 1952 as a second lieutenant in the Royal Australian Artillery. A series of regimental postings followed, including a tour in the Federation of Malaya in 1962, during which he spent a week in South Vietnam observing the fighting. During the previous year, Badcock had changed his surname to Badco. After another regimental posting, he transferred to the Royal Australian Infantry Corps, and was promoted to Major. In August 1966, Badco arrived in South Vietnam as a member of the Australian Army Training Team Vietnam. He was initially a sub-sector advisor, but in December became the operations advisor for Thua Thien Hu Province. In this role, between February and April 1967, he displayed conspicuous gallantry and leadership on three occasions while on operations with South Vietnamese regional force units. In the final battle, he was killed by a burst of machine gun fire. He was highly respected by both his South Vietnamese and United States allies, and was posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross for his actions. He was also awarded the United States Silver Star and several South Vietnamese medals. He was buried at Terendak Garrison Cemetery in Malaysia. In 2008, Badco's medal set was auctioned for 488,000 Australian dollars to Kerry Stokes in collaboration with the Government of South Australia. After going on display at the South Australian Museum and touring regional South Australia, it is now displayed in the Hall of Valour at the Australian War Memorial in Canberra. Buildings and awards have been named after Badco, including the Rest and Recreation Centre in South Vietnam, an assembly room and library at Portsea, the main lecture theatre at the Royal Military College, Duntroon, and a perpetual medal for an Australian Football League match held on Anzac Day as well as the electoral district of Badco in the South Australian House of Assembly. Early life and career Badco was born Peter John Badcock on the 11th of January 1934 in the Adelaide suburb of Malvern, South Australia. His father was Leslie Allen Badcock, a public servant, and his mother was Gladys Mary Ann Maynay Overton. He was educated at Adelaide Technical High School, before gaining employment as a clerk with the South Australian Public Service in 1950. Despite his father's opposition, Badcock held ambitions to join the Australian Army and enlisted in the regular army on 10 June 1950. After a brief posting to the 16th National Service Battalion in early 1952, Badcock entered the Officer Cadet School, Portsea, on 12 July 1952, and was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Royal Australian Artillery on 13 December that year. This was followed by a short posting to the 14th National Service Training Battalion, then a posting to the 1st Field Regiment in 1953. He returned to train national servicemen at Puckapunyal, Victoria, in 1955–1957. On 26 May 1956, he married Denise Maureen McMahon in the Methodist Church at Manly, New South Wales. The couple had three daughters, Carrie, Kim and Suzanne. Badcock was posted back to the 1st Field Regiment in 1957–1958. A junior staff officer in the Directorate of Military Operations and Plans at Australian Army Headquarters from 1958 until 1961. He was promoted to temporary captain in 1958, and substantive captain in June 1960. On 6 February 1961, he was posted to the 4th Field Regiment, and the same year changed his surname to Badco. The couple decided to change their surname after their third daughter was born in order to make it easier for them. On training exercises, Badco was aggressive and energetic. He was also a quiet, gentle and retiring man who confided mainly in his wife and had a dry wit. His colleagues found him inscrutable. He avoided boisterous mess activities and preferred reading military history. Short and stocky, a teetotaler who did not smoke, he wore horn-rimmed spectacles and regaled his colleagues on military matters when off duty. In June 1961, Badco was posted to the 103rd Field Battery as battery captain, and served a tour with them in the Federation of Malaya, attached to a British unit, in the aftermath of the Malayan emergency. He was detached from Malaya to South Vietnam over the period 7 to 14 November 1962 and observed how that country was combating the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese insurgency. During his visit, Badco sought opportunities to experience combat. He spent five days with an Army of the Republic of Vietnam Battalion on operations in Quang Gai Province, during which the unit had contacts with the enemy, including a pitched battle. During what was supposed to be a rest period, he arranged a helicopter flight to visit a Montagnard base in the Central Highlands. When his return to Malaya was delayed by an aircraft engine breakdown, he managed to join a heliborne operation of the 7th ARVN Division in the Mekong Delta. He returned to the 1st Field Regiment in November 1962 and remained with the unit until August 1965. At this point, Badco transferred from the artillery to the Royal Australian Infantry Corps, and on promotion to temporary major on 10 August 1965, was posted to the Infantry Centre at Ingleburn, New South Wales. Badco successfully applied for a posting with the Australian Army Training Team Vietnam, 
and attended advisor courses at the Intelligence Centre at Mossman, New South Wales, and Jungle Training Centre in Canungra, Queensland. He was promoted to provisional major in June 1966. Vietnam War Badco arrived in South Vietnam on 6 August 1966 as a member of the AATTV. He was posted as a sub-sector advisor in the Nam Hoa district of Thua Thien province. Sub-sector advisors worked at the district level with two elements of the territorial forces, the regional force and popular force, which were both forms of full-time provincial militia under control of the provincial chief, who was also the military sector chief. Each sector corresponded with a province, and each subsector with a district. The sector and subsector advisors had several responsibilities. To accompany the RFPF, colloquially known as rough puffs on operations, to provide on the job training to the RFPF, to oversee security in the hamlets, and to liaise with the ARVN troops operating in the sector or subsector. In his first week at Nam Hoa, Badco was advising an RF company on a clearing operation when it came under fire from VC irregulars in a tree line. As the company pressed forward, it came under fire from a bunker. Badco unsuccessfully tried to silence the bunker using his rifle and hand grenades, at which point the company commander suggested calling in close air support. Badco responded that air support was not necessary. He collected two jerry cans of petrol from a jeep following the company and then, circling around using cover, approached the bunker from outside its arc of fire. He poured both jerry cans over the bunker, backed off some distance and ignited it with a white phosphorus grenade destroying the VC position and allowing the company to advance. Easily identified by the maroon paratroop beret he wore, Badco led from the front and gave the impression he believed himself invincible. According to the former AATTV advisor and military historian Ian McNeil, enthusiasm, courage and audacity were Badco's hallmarks, and those around him were often infected by his optimism. Badco was so fearless he appeared reckless, and was often cautioned by colleagues in this respect. Jim Poshin, a warrant officer serving with the AATTV, recalled Badco driving alone in a jeep from Hue to Quang Tri, and being shot at by snipers as he passed by. Badco was also very interested in Vietnam, its people and their customs, and was particularly fascinated by Hue, the ancient royal city. He traded alcohol and souvenirs from the AATTV's canteen with U.S. Marines to acquire equipment for RF units, and also donated food and supplies to an orphanage. In December 1966, Badco became the sector operations advisor at the provincial headquarters in Hue. This role generally involved planning, liaison and staff work, but Badco interpreted his duty statement flexibly and led local forces into combat whenever he got the chance. According to a fellow AATTV officer, Captain Barry Rissell, he was a «veritable tiger» in combat, a characteristic that led his U.S. allies to dub him «the galloping major». At his first meeting with Badco, Corporal Chris Black described the scene. An old, bright red beret sat jauntily on his head. His drab jungle greens were almost hidden under the most amazing collection of weapons I have ever seen on one man. A Swedish sub-machine gun, his favorite, hung over one shoulder. It was balanced on the other side by a snub-nosed grenade launcher. On his belt an Australian pistol hung heavily and in one hand he heft an American machine gun. He lowered the armament to the floor, crossed the room, shook hands, refused a drink and talked about his boys. On 23 February 1967, Badco and his United States Marine Corps deputy, Captain James Custer, were advising an RF company operation in the Fu Tu district. About 660 yards on their flank was a PF platoon accompanied by two United States Army advisors, Captain Clement and Sergeant Thomas. Badco and Custer began to hear intermittent rifle fire, coming from the direction of the flanking platoon. Custer was monitoring radio transmissions when he heard that Clement had been wounded and Thomas was in danger. Badco ran across the intervening fire-swept ground to reach the PF platoon, with the enemy fire intensifying as he approached. He discovered that Clement was lying 160 yards ahead of the platoon, and had been mortally wounded while going to assist a wounded PF soldier. Thomas had tried to reach Clement and had in turn been wounded and was lying in the open between Clement and the platoon, which had pulled back. Badco observed that the enemy were dug in along a small rise, and appeared to be in about company strength and readying for an attack. He gathered the PF platoon and led a frontal assault on the enemy position, firing as he went. Dodging automatic fire, he charged a machine gun position and shot the crew with his rifle. Led by Badco, the PF platoon inflicted heavy casualties on the enemy. Once the PF platoon had consolidated its position, Badco went back, still under fire, to lift Clement and carry him out of the danger area. He then returned and assisted Thomas to a position from which he could be safely evacuated. The operation concluded successfully. Two weeks later, the Sector RF Reaction Company was tasked to the Quang Dean District subsector on 7 March in response to an attack on its district headquarters by a VC force of about two battalions. Quang Dean District Headquarters was in the eponymous village, about 16 miles northwest of Hue. Badco was traveling in a vehicle convoy with his deputy and another U.S. officer, when their vehicle veered off the road into a ditch. 
His deputy was killed and Badko left the vehicle and joined the company commander as they drove towards the village. By the time Badko and the company arrived, the village was occupied by the VC, and they were attacking the district headquarters from three sides. Badko quickly formed the company up into platoons, then led them through enemy fire to a position which flanked the VC. Forming them into an extended line, he then led them in an assault across open ground against the main VC force. In the face of this attack, the VC withdrew in disarray and the garrison of the district headquarters was saved. Badko's intervention prevented serious losses and the capture of the district headquarters. Badko became disillusioned with the war during his service in South Vietnam. He was particularly affected by an incident in February 1967 in which the ARVN regiment he was working with called in a napalm strike on a VC-occupied village, whose population was strongly supportive of the government, instead of attempting to attack and dislodge the VC. Badko and other advisors attempted to stop the use of napalm, but the ARVN divisional headquarters overruled them. A total of 40 civilians were killed or wounded, and Badko spent the next day and a half arranging the removal of bodies and new accommodation for the survivors. He eventually concluded that the conflict was an unwinnable war. On 7 April, Badko, who wrote frankly to his wife and children, penned a letter to them expressing his unease and cynicism about the conduct of the war and indicating that he wished to come home. At this time Badko was planning to take a short break on the Japanese island of Okinawa starting the following day, with an Australian army friend who had been visiting him, observing operations. When he returned from the field early in the morning of 7 April, Badko was told that he was required to act as sector headquarters duty officer due to the illness of another advisor. He saw his friend off to Da Nang and returned to Hue where he commenced duty, planning to join his friend once he had completed his shift. He soon became aware that an operation was going badly for an ARVN force at the hamlet of Nthuan in Hong Tra district, about 7.5 miles north of Hue. The operation involved the elite Hak Bao Divisional Reaction Company of the 1st ARVN Division along with a squadron of armored personnel carriers and two RF companies. They were attempting to eliminate a VC force of about two companies which was holding well-entrenched positions at Nthuan. The ARVN force had been met with intense fire and had suffered heavy casualties. Badko realized that the force did not have any advisors, because one of the Hak Bao advisors was ill, and advisors were required to work in pairs. Without any advisors, the ARVN were unable to access close air support to dislodge the VC. Badko decided that he needed to go out to the ARVN force and assist them. He arranged for relief as the sector duty officer, grabbed his weapons and equipment, and collected Sergeant Alberto Alvarado, his U.S. Army deputy advisor and radio operator. They sped in their jeep towards Nthuan. Upon arrival, they found the ARVN force preparing for another assault, which was to consist of the APCs followed by the Hack Bow Company. Badko and his deputy climbed aboard an APC and joined the attack. About 820 feet from Nthuan, the force was moving through the Hamlet Cemetery and hostile fire increased markedly, from recoilless rifles, mortars, machine guns and small arms. The APCs drove through the cemetery and deployed to suppress the enemy fire. The Hack Bow Company pressed forward through the cemetery, at which time Badko and Alvarado dismounted and joined them. During the last stages of the attack, the two advisors were leading the infantry when the enemy fire became so heavy that both the APCs and infantry began falling back through the cemetery. Badko began rallying the ARVN soldiers to renew the assault, and artillery was called in on the enemy positions. After this, Badko and Alvarado again pushed forward, attempting to encourage the ARVN troops to press home the attack. The final stages of the line of assault crossed dry, open rice paddy fields with no cover. Enemy fire converged on Badko, Alvarado and the ARVN troops, who again went to ground. On this occasion, Badko refused to fall back. He headed straight for an enemy machine gun position that was causing devastation among the ARVN force. Forced to ground by the intense fire, Badko was soon joined by Alvarado. Badko lifted himself up to throw a hand grenade, but was pulled down by Alvarado as bullets cracked overhead. When he rose to throw again, he was cut down by machine gun fire and killed instantly. Alvarado attempted to recover his body, but was shot in the leg. He then used his radio to call in close air support and more artillery to suppress the enemy fire. The Hack Bow Company, supported by the APCs, then moved forward and captured the objective. A military funeral for Badko was held in Hue, the largest for any Allied soldier until that date. Badko was buried in the Terendak Garrison Cemetery in Malacca, Malaysia. The epitaph on his gravestone reads, he lived and died a soldier. According to McNeil, Badko was highly respected by both South Vietnamese and U.S. allies, and was an inspirational leader who had saved the lives of his comrades and turned defeat into victory on many occasions. Post's script for his courage and leadership on 23 February, 7 March, and 7 April 1967, Badko was posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross, the highest award for gallantry in battle that could be awarded at that time to a member of the Australian Armed Forces. The full citation for the award appeared in the London Gazette on 17 October 1967. 
It read, in part, on 23 February 1967 he was acting as an advisor to a regional force company in support of a sector operation in Fu Tu district. He monitored a radio transmission which stated that the subsector advisor, a United States Army officer, had been killed and that his body was within 50 meters of an enemy machine gun position. Further, the United States medical advisor had been wounded and was in immediate danger from the enemy. Major Badko with complete disregard for his own safety moved alone across 600 meters of fire-swept ground and reached the wounded advisor, attended to him and ensured his future safety. He then organized a force of one platoon and led them towards the enemy post. His personal leadership, words of encouragement, and actions in the face of hostile enemy fire forced the platoon to successfully assault the enemy position and capture it, where he personally killed the machine gunners directly in front of him. He then picked up the body of the dead officer and ran back to the command post over open ground still covered by enemy fire. On 7 March 1967, at approximately 0645 hours, the Sector Reaction Company was deployed to Quang Dinh subsector to counter an attack by the Viet Cong on the headquarters. Major Badko left the command group after their vehicle broke down and a United States officer was killed. He joined the company headquarters and personally led the company in an attack over open terrain to assault and capture a heavily defended enemy position. In the face of certain death and heavy losses his personal courage and leadership turned certain defeat into victory and prevented the enemy from capturing the district headquarters. On 7 April 1967, on an operation in Hong Tra District, Major Badko was with the 1st ARVN Division Reaction Company and some armored personnel carriers. During the move forward to an objective the company came under heavy small arms fire and withdrew to a cemetery for cover. This left Major Badko and his radio operator about 50 meters in front of the leading elements, under heavy mortar fire. Seeing this withdrawal, Major Badko ran back to them, moved amongst them and by encouragement and example got them moving forward again. He then set out in front of the company to lead them on. The company stopped again under heavy fire but Major Badko continued on to cover and prepared to throw grenades. When he rose to throw, his radio operator pulled him down as heavy small arms fire was being brought to bear on them. He later got up again to throw a grenade and was hit and killed by a burst of machine gun fire. Soon after, friendly artillery fire was called in and the position was assaulted and captured. Major Badko's conspicuous gallantry and leadership on all these occasions was an inspiration to all. Each action, ultimately, was successful, due entirely to his efforts, the final one ending in his death. His valor and leadership were in the highest traditions of the military profession and the Australian Regular Army. The London Gazette 17 October 1967 Denise Badko received her husband's Victoria Cross from the Governor-General, Lord Casey, at Government House, Canberra, on 5 April 1968. Badko was awarded the United States Silver Star with Bronze Oak Leaf Cluster, Air Medal and Purple Heart, and was made a Knight of the National Order of Vietnam. South Vietnam also awarded him the Cross of Gallantry with Palm, Gold Star, and Silver Star, the Armed Forces Honor Medal, First Class, Vietnam Campaign Medal and Wound Medal, and he posthumously received the Vietnam Medal and Australian Defence Medal from Australia. The official history of Australia's involvement in Southeast Asian conflicts 1948–1975 judged that Badko was a dedicated career soldier who quickly acquired an understanding of the Vietnamese people and their customs along with an affectionate respect for the Vietnamese territorials he trained and led. Members of the AATTV received many decorations, and the unit gained the distinction of being, probably the mostly highly decorated unit for its size in the Australian Army. Only four Australians were awarded the Victoria Cross in Vietnam. All went to members of the AATTV, two of them posthumously. An Australian and New Zealand Soldiers Club in Vung Tau was named the Peter Badko Club in his honour in November 1967. At Portsea, the assembly room and library was named after him, complete with a portrait and bronze plaque. After Portsea closed in 1985, the main lecture theatre in the military instruction block at Royal Military College, Duntroon in Canberra was named after him. In 1998–1999, a rest area in Badco's honour was established near Lake George on the Remembrance Driveway between Canberra and Sydney. In 1999, the ex-military rehabilitation centre moved to the Peter Badco VC complex at Edinburgh, South Australia. Badco's Metal Group and Personal Memoirs were offered for sale by auction in Sydney on 20 May 2008 and were sold for $488,000 Australian dollars to the media magnate and philanthropist Kerry Stokes in collaboration with the Government of South Australia. Badco's Victoria Cross and Associated Medals were displayed at the South Australian Museum in Adelaide, prior to being toured to 17 regional towns in South Australia between 21 March and 20 June 2009, before being displayed permanently at the Australian War Memorial in Canberra from 2016. His VC was the 71st of the 100 VCs awarded to Australians to be placed on public display there. Since 2004, the award for the player displaying the most courage, skill, self-sacrifice and teamwork in the Australian Football League match in Adelaide on Anzac Day each year has been called the Peter Badko VC Medal.
The medal has been won by three times by Travis Boak of the Port Adelaide Football Club, and twice by Joel Selwood of the Geelong Football Club. In 2015, the Australian government repatriated the remains of 22 Australian soldiers buried at Turendak, but the Badko family asked that he remain buried there, in accordance with his express wishes. In 2016, the South Australian Electoral District of Ashford was renamed Badco in his honour. In 2020, a 60-bed residential aged care facility named Peter Badco VC House was completed in Newcastle, New South Wales, by the Returned and Services League of Australia Aged Care Arm, RSL Lifecare. <laughs>